picked Polynovo because it is one of the best performers today, adding to yesterday's stellar performance after telling the market that U.S. sales for the first two years were up 85% to close to $11 million. The chairman said that while the sales increase was lumpy and off a low base, he's calling it breathtaking. And at the same time, the same of what he's seen in the past three years. So, Polynovo was the early pick, and then Prometicus came to the fore. They have announced a $140 million 10 year deal with a entity, a nonprofit in Texas. And so, Rudy and Philip Pepe, I just thought we should have a P theme today. <laughs> and I am putting you both under pressure. Mm -hmm. And we will, I suppose, start by talking about the original pick, Polynovo, that's on the screen right now to get your view. Polynovo, so this was yesterday's news, sales going well, on a tear. Do you like the company? It's interesting that they chose to put out a two month trading update late in September. They will put out a quarterly update in a few days time. So why not wait? I mean, oh, surely okay. you've got the September data. So it's great they've got news. They want to yell it from the rooftops, but you're putting out an ASX release in a few days time and maybe it's continuous disclosure. Maybe they have to, let us give them the better for the doubt. But a sort of out of cycle announcement um, that was a positive that they wouldn't normally do. I'm cynical by nature, so I'm wondering what's the real motivation behind it. Let's just mm. say it's genuine good news. Let's get it out there. Mm. September better be good, yeah. uh, at yeah. least as good, 80% 80, 80 plus good, yeah. or you've just given us the good news and then guess what? It was just a pull forward of sales and we got nothing in September and the mm. quarter was actually mm. soft. So um, it's interesting. It is on a lazy 98 times PE. It, it has an E, so that's a positive, apparently, according to consensus data. Um, it's um, it's well off its highs, uh, just off its lows, so it's bouncing. I'm, I'm going to say wait for the full quarterly result rather than trade off a two-month update because I'm mm. cynical. So I'm going to call it a hold, um, soft sell, but I'll call it a hold just because I'm cynical. Ooh, okay, interesting. Yeah. Rudy, I, I could hear I you heard, say, uh-huh, uh-huh. I heard, uh -huh. I heard soft sell, yes. <laughs> um, let, let's throw in another P, price earnings ratio. I mean, 98 there, I, I had a look this morning. I, I have them on more than a thousand. Okay. Um, just shows you that, um, I mean, data. You can find the data that ever you want to. But neither 98 or 1000 is ne by necessary uh, indicating that it's expensive, because um, that's a very unintelligent use of the price earnings ratio. I actually think you can, you can give them the benefit of the doubt here, but I do share uh, some of the comments that, uh, that, that Philip is making. What we have to realize is that this is a very small company, so the growth looks impressive, but they, by, the, by, by their own messaging, indicate we come from nothing. Yeah. And that's, the main, that's how these things work. Yeah? So this could potentially become one of those uh, success stories in the local healthcare sector. We have a few candidates for that. Um, but because it's such a small company, there is absolutely no guarantees. Yeah. And there will, there's only one guarantee that you can, you can almost put forward, is they will stumble at some point. It's, it's just going to happen because they are a small company, they come from nowhere, and, and little things make big differences. So I personally think, also because where the share price is, um, and it, <laughs> not near their highs is an euphemism, um, it's much closer to the bottom than from, from recent. Uh, I think you can give them <coughs> the benefit of the doubt, but you have to do that with, with the right sense of, of, of a risk assessment. So you definitely don't make this a big, a big uh, um, holding in your portfolio. Just one of those places maybe in your portfolio, a few percentages here or whatever, just to have one of those stocks that, that potentially that could blow up, that could blow yeah. up and, and double and double again if they do things right. But there will be volatility along the way. So is this a Rudy Specky buy? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Uh, so I have to though compare and contrast, I suppose, with Prometicus at ah, today. Yeah. So this is a major contract. This is a ten-year contract. It says that there could be potential further upside to this contract. Shares are up by close to 10%. I mean, Prometicus Com is not setting a foot wrong, Complete correct? different proposition. Same yeah. sector. If we 
put it on the healthcare. Yeah, medical Cause, healthcare. Cause yes, but a uh, completely different proposition. Um, as I tweeted this morning, when you're in finance, there's only a few, few guarantees in finance. Shares will go up and down, and ProMedicus will announce a new contract. And that's exactly what they did. So this is the largest to date. Um, this is also the reason why this is one of the better performing um, stocks on the share market, despite uh, rising bond deals, despite potential for recessions, despite the healthcare sector going sideways for three years globally, um, the market is just really caught on with confidence on this on this story. Is um, it too expensive to buy, though? You know what? This stock is always too expensive to buy. And you and like paying for quality. Exactly. So, <laughs> what you do with those stocks is you don't buy them on a day like today because I mean. You don't buy them in the rally, but you know what? It's the share market. Crazy things happen. You just wait your time until someone decides on a, on a given day that all the shares need to go down and Prometics needs to go down as well. And you just give yourself a little bit of a margin of safety. But you know I mean, you can't wait for these stocks to become cheap because when they ever become cheap, that means the growth story is over. That's when you don't want to have them. Yeah. Okay. See, I didn't pick Prometicus first instance as the stock of the day yeah. because we just covered it last week oh, on the okay. call. Mm. But it's to an, that it's point, a, nothing's really a, changed. No, it is put it in, you know one foot in front of the other when it comes to Prometicus. Well, it, what what has changed is now the valuation goes up because yeah. they have more more revenue now, so they will I mean, and it just adds. The advantage of Prometicus is a little bit like CSL. You can make calculations mm -hmm. today sort of reliably about what their profits will be next year because it, it works at the, at, the, at the delay. They have the contract today, but the implementation takes a while. So you can, you can extra, extrapolate that. That's one of the reasons why investors are so confident. Mm -hmm. Okay, but in keeping with the rules of the program, it's not a buy because you'd wait for yeah, a day where the market's it's, being it's, sold it's, off. It's you don't want to buy it when it's up 10%. It's a strong hold, I would call it. Strong hold. And you, and you, do, you do ignore short-term volatility yeah. and you take a longer-term view. Thank you. Uh, do you feel this as, as passionately about Prometicus uh, as our friend Rudy? Prometicus is... If you say no, I'm going to call Claude. Call, <laughs> call, call Claude. Hello, Claude, if you're listening. Um, Prometicus is going up because it's going up. People keep looking for reasons to buy. It's pushed through another 12-month high. Analysts will upgrade. It's always going to look fair value. Analysts will upgrade. Share price goes up. Analysts will upgrade. So fundamental valuation, throw it out the window. Gosh, you are a cynic, aren't uh, you? <laughs> no, it, it's, it, can, it can do no wrong until there's something wrong. Will That's it do true. something wrong? Well, we don't know. It reminds me a little bit of CSL. Everyone's jumped over CSL, Macquarie. Everyone jumped over Macquarie until things slowed. So no, don't, don't buy it today. Um, <laughs> buy it before. And I, I'm going to call it a hold. Don't sell it because you don't no. sell your winners. Mm. And the charters tell me. When, when a stock hits a 12-month high or an all-time high, which is what it's done today, that's actually a good thing. Momentum will carry it and momentum works in the share market. I just can't and also bring you look foolish when they announce their next contract. Yeah, so let, let's call it an aggressive hold. Okay. Well, that was that's Philip That's a strong Pepe. and aggressive hold. Oh, aggressive. Yeah. aggressive and strong hold. There's some new categories happening already. Well, how would you go anywhere else when this keeps coming up day after day? Philip Pepe, Prometicus, Polynovo. Ready, Philip Peck, Van Dyke. I just like saying all these P's, Prometicus <laughs> and Polynovo. <laughs>